Pinocchio, a story by Clodi, narrated and accompanied by David Coombs. When you hear this sound, turn the page. One day, Geppetto, the woodcarver, began making a puppet that he could make dance, run, and leap like an acrobat. He named the puppet Pinocchio, a name he hoped would bring him luck. Imagine Geppetto's surprise when his puppet began to move and talk. He even ran away like a naughty little boy. One day, a large cricket appeared at Geppetto's. He introduced himself to Pinocchio as the talking cricket. He warned the little puppet to be good and behave himself, or he would be in great trouble. Pinocchio paid no attention to the warning. He enjoyed being naughty and only wanted to have fun and amuse himself. In fact, Pinocchio even shakes the cricket with a wooden hammer because he did not want to listen to his advice. Pinocchio wanted to be like real boys and go to school. So Geppetto sold his coat to buy a spelling book. Pinocchio started out for school. He had only gone a short distance when he heard a lot of noise and came to a marionette show. Wanting to see the show, he sold his book to a passing merchant and used the money to buy a ticket. realized that Pinocchio was not a real boy at all, but a puppet. They shouted for him to join them on the stage. What a commotion they all made! The owner of the show was terribly angry and threatened to chop Pinocchio up for firewood for coming and causing a disturbance. But Pinocchio begged for mercy. He promised to leave and not to cause any more trouble. He then told how Geppetto had sold his coat or school book. And he admitted he had been very foolish to sell his book, to buy a ticket for the show. Now, he said, he would try to be wiser if he could go home. The marionette master listened and felt sorry for Pinocchio. He then gave him five gold pieces to buy back the book and the coat. Pinocchio thanked him and promised to go straight home and try to act more wisely in the future. He did not get very far before he met a lame fox and a blind cat. Knowing that Pinocchio had money, they pretended to be his friends. <laughs> and invited him to have dinner with them in a nearby inn. They had dinner and went to bed. Pinocchio slept, the fox and the cat, who were really not lame or blind at all, worked out a plan to rob him of his money. They got up, dressed in black, to look like highwaymen, and hid in the forest. Then, when Pinocchio came, passed on his way home, 
and the cat were waiting for him and hung him from a tree to try to take his money, but he held it in his mouth between tightly clenched teeth. Pinocchio's guardian fairy, a beautiful maiden with blue hair, lived nearby. She sent her dog to chase the cat and the fox away and to bring Pinocchio to her castle. She asked Pinocchio how he had got into such a muddle. He was ashamed to tell her the truth. But every time he told a lie, his nose grew longer. He was horrified. When he changed his mind and told the truth, his nose went back to its normal size. Pinocchio Learning that lies will always be found out, promised to tell the truth and started for home. Once again, foolish Pinocchio met the fox and cat. This time they urged him to plant his gold pieces and leave them overnight so they would grow into money trees. Of course, while he slept, they dug up his money and disappeared. Sadly, Pinocchio started for home again. This time he met some mischievous boys told him of a wonderful place where they could enjoy themselves as much as they wanted. It was a land of holidays, games, toys, cakes, and candies. What they did not tell Pinocchio was that boys who got into trouble there were changed into donkeys and sent away. Sure enough, before long, Pinocchio had become a donkey and was sold to the circus. He was taught to dance and jump through a hoop. But he did not perform well. He became lame, and since lame donkeys can no longer do tricks, he was thrown into the sea to drown. As if by magic. When he hit the water, he changed back into a puppet and was swallowed by a huge whale. How dark it was inside the whale. The darkness frightened Pinocchio. He looked around and thought he saw a light coming towards him inside the whale. Sure enough, it was a flickering candle in a green bottle, and was carried by, he could hardly believe it, Geppetto! He ran to the old man asking forgiveness. Geppetto had worried so much about Pinocchio that he had set out in a small boat to search for his puppet. The boat had turned over in a storm. Geppetto and the boat had been swallowed in one gulp by the whale. At last, Pinocchio had become wiser and more considerate. He wanted to repay Geppetto for all the worry and trouble that he had caused him. He took Geppetto's arm and while the whale slept near the shore with its mouth open, Pinocchio led Geppetto up the whale's throat and out of its mouth. They swam to land and began the long journey home. 
They met the cat and fox, who by now were truly blind and lame. But Pinocchio, having learned his lesson, passed them by. Pinocchio and Geppetto reached home at last. Pinocchio cared for Geppetto, cooked for him, worked, earned money, and studied. Geppetto became stronger and healthy once again. One night, Pinocchio dreamed that the good fairy with blue hair and the talking cricket came to visit him. They reminded him that boys who care for their parents who behave and tell the truth, who learn and become wise, will always get along in the world and be happy. At last they approved of Pinocchio. The dream ended. Pinocchio opened his eyes and looked around. He was no longer a wooden puppet. He was a real boy like all other boys. And his old puppet body was lying motionless on the chair. He ran to Geppetto, who had gotten his strength back and was once again at work carving wood. Pinocchio went to school like other boys, helped Geppetto in many ways. So they lived together, Pinocchio and Geppetto, happy and content for the rest of their lives. The End We would now like to thank the following characters for their participation in the story. Geppetto Cricket. The marionette master. The fox and cat. The good fairy. The mischievous boys. And let's not forget the whale. Oh, it was dark inside. Thank you for listening to this story. We now ask that you will rewind the tape to the beginning so that another child can listen to it. Thank you.